Hello everybody and welcome to this special AQA A-Level Chemistry predictions video where I'm going to try to help you to prioritise your revision for paper 3. To do this I've looked at what's come up on paper 1 and paper 2 already this year and importantly what hasn't come up yet. I've compared this with how important particular topics normally are across all the past papers that there have been and I'm using this to inform my predictions about what I think is most likely to come up. And I'll finish by giving some advice about how to approach the multiple choice section of paper 3. There are normally six questions in section A of paper 3 and here are my suggestions for what could come up from the organic chemistry topics. First of all, I think it's highly likely that chromatography will come up on this paper. There's a required practical about this topic and there have been no marks so far. Additionally, there haven't been any marks about amino acids, proteins and DNA or polymers. I suspect there could be two organic chemistry questions, perhaps one about chromatography and either amino acids or polymers. From here there are some topics that are slightly less likely but could still come up because there haven't been many things asked about them yet. We've got carboxylic acids, particularly ester hydrolysis and nucleophilic addition elimination. From the alcohols topic we could have some elimination or the preparation of alcohol using biofuels. And then some small things that haven't come up much, infrared spectroscopy and isomerism, particularly stereoisomerism. Paper 3 normally has quite a significant practical element to it, so my first prediction for the inorganic topics that could come up are the testing for ions required practical. This includes the sulfate ions, the hydroxide ions and the different halide ions using silver nitrate and acidifying it to remove those carbonate impurities. From the transition metals topic we haven't had anything about colour or isomerism so far and we've only had very little about the testing for ions required practical as well. There hasn't been very much at all so far about period 3 oxides so that's my third inorganic chemistry prediction and last of all there hasn't been very much about the halogens topic and given that we're trying to apply a practical focus this could be the displacement reactions proving the oxidizing ability, the reactions with concentrated sulfuric acid proving the reducing ability patterns or this could also come up in the testing for ions required practical as well. For physical chemistry, I think that there are two things that are extremely likely to come up in this paper. First of all, acids and bases, and from within that topic, the indicators and pH curves required practical. This could involve plotting a graph. There hasn't been any plotting of graphs so far. We haven't had anything yet about buffers or about weak acids, so there could be some explanation questions about those and some pH calculations. My second big tip for the physical chemistry is the rates of reaction topic. There's been some about that already, but there hasn't been anything about the iodine clock required practical or the disappearing cross required practical. Either of those could also link in with the Maxwell-Boltzmann curves, and both of those could also involve the plotting of a graph. We haven't had anything about the Arrhenius equation so far either, and that could be a calculation, or that could also be a plotting of a graph. So those are my big two tips for physical chemistry. Some things that are less likely but could still come up. Fuel cells, nothing about that so far. There's also an electrochemistry required practical, but there's been things relating to similar content already. Free energy, there's been some thermodynamics to do with entropy, but not the free energy graphs and the point at which it becomes feasible. And then from the amount of substance topic, we've not had anything about water of crystallization yet, or about percentage yield and atom economy. There are 12 required practicals that could be assessed on paper 3, so how do you prioritise those? Well, these top four that I'm showing here are the ones that I think are more likely to come up. We've got the iodine clock and disappearing cross from the rate equation topics. I think only one of those will come up. Acids and bases, we've got the pH curves required practical. Chromatography, I think, is highly likely to come up. And then probably the sulfate, hydroxide and halide testing for ions rather than the transition metals. And then still possible, but definitely much less likely, we've got distillation from organic required practical 5 and the electro potentials required practical. 
Section A normally has a maximum of six questions before the multiple choice questions in section B. And so here are the six topics that I think are most likely to come up. Of course, I could be wrong, in which case I think it will be some of the other things I've predicted on the earlier sections. So my top six, we've got acids and bases. That could be the pH curves or buffer calculations or weak acids. The rate equation, so the iodine clock, disappearing cross, Maxwell-Boltzmann curves or Arrhenius equation are the the most likely subtopics from there. The testing for ions required practical is the most likely inorganic topic to come up, I think. Then we've got chromatography from the organic chemistry. There's a required practical in there. And we've got bits about polarity and intermolecular forces that could be woven into a question like that to be making it worth more marks. And finally, another organic chemistry topic, perhaps a combined question asking us about amino acids, proteins, DNA, along with condensation or addition polymers. There are always 30 multiple choice questions on paper three chemistry, and it's recommended that you spend 50 minutes in total on them, which works out at about 1.6 minutes per question. But of course, some take longer and some take less time. If these are a particular weakness of yours, it might be a good idea to start with these because then you can spend that dedicated 50 minutes on them and make sure you really do them justice. If it's something that you feel that you are a bit weak on, you might want to check out some of my multiple choice question videos. I've made a playlist of them and a link is going to be in the description for this video. The last thing to say about multiple choice questions is this year on the AS paper, they had a big question series about one particular table of data to do with testing for ions. There was a series of different tests done on a series of different unknown compounds, and they actually asked five consecutive questions about those results from that table. So I could see that thing happening again this year for A-level chemistry on paper three, possibly again to do with testing for ions or maybe to do with the disappearing cross or the iodine clock experiment, a series of related questions about something that's presented to you at the start of the multiple choice section. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it's been useful to help you prepare and prioritise Ready for Paper 3 at the end of this week. I have put together a YouTube playlist called AQA A-Level Chemistry Paper 3 Predictions. It's full of the topics related to my predictions. It's a mixture of exam question walkthroughs and some explanation videos. Okay, that's the end of the video. Good luck, everybody.